We've been looking so far at lines and the equations that represent those lines, right? We get that if you want to represent a point, what do you use? You use coordinates, right? But if you want a whole bunch of points and they all fit together in some kind of logical way, like all being on a line, you don't use coordinates, you use an equation. Something equals something, okay? Now, I'm interested in trying to work out what if we know some characteristics about the line, like say, its gradient and a place it goes through. Can we work out its equation if we know that information? So, I want us to set this together First, just by getting a picture of what would this look like, okay? Just roughly in our head, so that when we get to an equation at the end, we can check, well, does this sound reasonable or not? So would you please, underneath where you've written this, draw me up a set of axes. As you draw it, don't just draw it uh, anywhere, like equally spaced out. Think about this point here that is going to have to go onto your Cartesian plane. And then think about what it means when a line has gradient two, what direction it's going in, how you would describe it, and therefore how much of the graph you should draw. Okay? So this is what my set of axes is roughly going to look like. Oh, that's really wonky. Let's try that again. Okay. Uh, you can see I do have all four of my quadrants here. But 1 and 2 are much bigger than 3 and 4. Can anyone suggest, by looking at the information provided, why might that be a good direction to head in? Yeah, Isma. Because the gradient is 2 and it's positive, meaning it's going up and it's bigger than 1, so it's like really steep. Yeah, fantastic. I'm going to start over here, and then I'm going to go up really fast. Okay, I mean, there is going to be a part below here, but I'm not going to draw most of it. So that's why I have most of my stuff above here. You don't have to have that much, but it'll probably be easier to see the graph if that's what yours looks like. So now I'm going to put a point, negative 3, comma 1, onto my Cartesian plane. Let's put it somewhere like over here. And if I want to go up one unit, that will give me the coordinates that I'm at. I'll leave that there. Okay, so I've placed a big fat dot at negative 3, comma 1. And now I want to draw up my line with a gradient of 2. Now you can actually do this, like because you guys have grid paper on you, you can actually do this quite accurately. A gradient of 2 is the same as a gradient of 2 over 1. So remember, gradient's a fraction. Something over something. What over what? Rise. Rise over run. That means every time you run across one unit, you will rise two units. Does that make sense? And that's what gives it its steepness. Okay. So in fact, on your green paper, you could do something like this. You go across one, there's my run, and then you're going to rise. Two. I just have to imagine it because I don't have a grid, obviously. I'm going to keep on going. One, and then two. One, and then two. And if you have a look at what you've created here, this sort of step ladder uh, picture, then you can join up the dots, and that shows you what you should be expecting for your line. Okay? So, now we have a picture in our minds, on our page, for what we ought to get. This is not an equation, though. So how will we work it out? So far, you guys know two forms for equations that give you straight lines. Do you remember what the two forms are? Any takers? General form. Okay, general form. We know general form. I'm just going to write it up the top here because it's been a while since I've already had a look at this. General form, the actual equation, it starts with an A. What comes after that? X, X plus B, y. B, y plus B, C. equals B, C. great. And by the way, just while we're talking about general form, uh, A, B, and C, what kinds of numbers are those again? Integers. We want them to be integers, and we particularly want A to be a positive integer. Okay, so cool, we remember that. There was another form. What was it? Slope intercept form. Okay, slope intercept form. That started with a Y. What was on the right hand side? MX plus B. This is the slope, the gradient, right here. This is the intercept. Which one is it again? Y it's the y intercept. Very good. Now, I can now choose. I've got two to choose from. Which should I use, or which might be more helpful to me, as a starting point to use this information? Now, have a look at the two pieces of um, 
data that have been supplied to you. What are they? Gradient, gradient and a, a, a coordinate, right? So when you hear the word gradient, which of these two is going to be more useful to you? The Clearly the second one, because it's got the gradient right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, here's going to be my starting point. And I'm going to say, well, if I know the gradient is 2, let's get rid of this now, then I can write the equation of the line, the equation of the line, will be, I can substitute in the gradient that has been told to me, y equals 2x. Now, do I know what this b is, this y-intercept? Hmm. At the moment, at the moment, I don't know what it is. I will work out what it is though. Until I've done that, I'm just going to write plus b. It's a pronumeral. I still don't know what its value is. That's fine. Okay. Now, here's an important piece of logic. I've used this gradient bit. That's good. But I also need to bring this guy into play. It's not just any line with a gradient of 2. It's a particular one. Okay. So underneath here, where I've written y equals 2x plus b, I'm going to say since the line passes through uh, these coordinates here, negative 3, comma, 1. I'm about to finish this sentence, but before I do, I want you to help me remember. Negative 3 and 1 are coordinates. Which one is which? Negative 3 is the x coordinate. That's worth writing down. And 1 is the y. Cool. Now, what that means is x is equal to negative 3 at the time when y is equal to 1. So therefore, I ought to be able to put those x and y numbers into here and it should work, right? So here's the way I'm going to finish this sentence. Since the line passes through there, comma, x equals negative 3 and y equals 1 is a solution to this equation or solves the equation. Or another way to say it is satisfies the equation. They all mean the same thing. Okay? Negative 3 comma 1, that's an x and a y value. So those x and y values should make this equation work. So I'm going to substitute them in and see what happens. Have a look. I'm going to go from here now. But instead of y and x, I'm going to substitute in these numbers that have been supplied by the coordinates. I'm not going to write y out the front. I'm going to write 1. That's the y coordinate, isn't it? I write 2, but I'm not going to write x. I'm going to write negative 3. That's the x coordinate. Plus b. I still don't know what that is, but I'm about to find out. Can you help me simplify this a little bit? 1 equals negative 6 plus b. Good. I want to make b the subject, right? So what shall I do to both sides? Watch out, it is a negative here, so to overcome that, to counter it, I will add 6 to both sides. So this is a 1, right? So this is 1. I'll put b on the left hand side because we usually say that when it's the subject. Okay. So b equals 7. What's b again? Like, what's its significance? Y it's the y intercept. Does that look like, look at your diagram that you drew. Does it look like 7? Yeah. Yeah. It should, because you remember, you can actually see the way I've drawn it. You can see. You remember when I went across one, up two, across one, up two? Have a look how far I went up. Two, uh, another two, another two. I went six up. What was the y value I started at? One. one. <coughs> so when you go six up, you get seven. <coughs> okay? So this is really important that the visual picture sort of confirms to you that my algebra worked out. So now I can state what the equation of the line is. Therefore, y is equal to two x plus Cool. Okay, I've answered the question. That's great. However, it was a little bit awkward. Like we had to sort of go through lots of twists and turns. Um, see this guy here, y equals mx plus b. It was really nice for gradient. Gradient just kind of plopped straight in there. We didn't have to do any work. We just wrote it down. But then to get all this, like we had to think really hard because we didn't have the y-intercept. We had some other stuff, but we didn't have exactly what that form of the equation wanted. So instead of this, instead of um, just gradient intercept form, we're going to develop point gradient form. It's a different form, same kinds of lines, 
But if you have a point instead of an intercept, you can do what you did here. You just drop it straight in. No great long amount of working required. 